Okay, so the vast majority of adults don't remember how to do a problem like this. And whether it's 99% or 98%, who knows the exact percentage, but I can assure you it is the vast majority of uh, people who have been out of school for a long time just don't remember how to perform basic arithmetic. Okay, so we're going to uh, obviously do this problem here. And if you want to challenge yourself, it might be kind of fun for you to pause the video and see if you can actually do this, obviously without the aid of a calculator. But this uh, video is not designed uh, to make you feel bad. Okay, just listen, if you're not doing arithmetic on a regular basis, and especially let's say you've been out of school for 20, 30, 40 years, <laughs> you know, and you're using these things called calculators, uh, which are awesome little tools to perform these operations, you shouldn't feel bad about it. But the point I'm... Uh, I want to make in this video is that if you're going to study uh, more advanced mathematics, let's say um, algebra and beyond, what we learned, okay, in elementary or primary school is needed, okay, to learn more advanced concepts. And, you know, I think a lot of students uh, will find themselves struggling in algebra or, you know, more advanced mathematics uh, because the concepts, you know, kind of depend upon your foundation of understanding these basic arithmetic operations. Of course, most students don't know that that's going to be the case. They just kind of like, ah, eh, once I've done with, you know, fifth grade or fourth grade, I can just use my calculator and forget all this stuff. But that's not the case. Okay, so we're going to go down a memory lane and do this um, particular problem. And, you know, if you want to make it fun, you know, make this video uh, more interesting, I would encourage you to pause the video and just see if you can do this again, of course, without the aid of a calculator. All right, so we're going to do this in just one second, but first let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over the years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most robust, comprehensive math help programs there is. So if you need to take a full math course or you're taking a course right now and you need assistance in it, my program can help you out. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. But uh, I have uh, very comprehensive lessons. Okay, I've been teaching for decades, so I know how to teach. I have very, very um, detailed lessons. And probably more importantly, I show you uh, by video, Okay, all, it's all video-based, how to solve the most common problems you're going to face in middle and high school mathematics, okay? And even college-level mathematics. So I have thousands of problems solved. It's taken me years to build this. So again, if you're interested, I'll let you be the judge of my program. You can follow the link in the description of this video. Now, if you are taking math, okay, I need you to take a look at your notes. How are your notes, okay? If they're anything less than outstanding, then you need to focus on improving your notes. One rule that I've seen over the years is those students with the best math notes almost always have the best math grade, and the reverse is true, okay? If your notes aren't quite um, there, they're sloppy, you're not taking notes, then your math grades are going to suffer. Now, in the meantime, you need something to study from, so I actually offer notes if you're taking any one of these particular courses, so that would be pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can uh, find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's get into this problem. So it's a division problem. We're gonna divide this number by this number. Now, now the way I'm going to do it is the way I was taught way back in the 1970s. That was a really cool time to be in uh, elementary school. And I think I've probably started, oh, I don't know, kindergarten, maybe like 1974, 75. It was a great time. And I'll tell you, uh, at that particular time, you know, uh, you know, you're talking about the way math was taught was, you know, this is kind of very traditional, classic kind of approach to mathematics. Now, in the last, within the last decade or so, there's been different ways students coming up now in primary school, there's different techniques, and that's a whole nother discussion, things like common core, um, kind of brings and ties in other ways to approach basic arithmetic problems. A lot of people aren't a fan of it. Me personally, I'm not a fan of it. I believe in kind of the old school methods of uh, learning mathematics, but maybe, you know, maybe uh, I need to learn something as well. But the bottom line is this, got to know, hey, can you perform this operation? Can we get the right answer? That's really 
you know, uh, what we're looking for. So the way I'm going to do the problem, if it's not the exact way you were taught, don't worry about it. It's just not like one method is better than the other, as long as you can get the right answer, right? Okay, so here we go. But actually, hold on one second. I uh, digress. What we're going to be using here, okay, real quick here, is something called the division algorithm. Division algorithm. Okay, and I wanted to speak on this real, real fast. This is what you were taught. Now, you weren't taught, hey, we're going to learn the division algorithm when you were like in, you know, third grade. That's what you were taught, but that's you were taught the division algorithm. Okay, uh, your teacher just didn't state that. Your teacher was like, okay, here's the steps. Let's practice these basic problems, etc. And that comes into play in more advanced mathematics when we're doing things like this. I'm going to just show you. We're not going to do the problem. But we can actually do long division with um, uh, polynomial functions. Now, of course, if you don't understand what this thing is, don't worry about it. But I'm just showing you an example. I'm just making something up here. Okay, we can divide this thing by this thing. And the procedure that we're going to use to do this problem, this is not an easy problem to do, is called the division algorithm, and it's basically the exact same thing we learned back when we were doing problems like uh, this, okay, back in elementary school. So this procedure, an algorithm, algorithm, that's on algebra, an algorithm is basically like a uh, procedure, a recipe. Yeah, it's what uh, that word is kind of used in computer programming. It's a program that we run to do this, right? We're going to do some certain steps to get the right answer. But what we learn here is the same thing that we would apply here, okay? So that's kind of my broader point. And now, without further ado, let's go ahead and see my work. All right, now let's, if you have a calculator handy, and you probably do, maybe your cell phone, go ahead and take uh, 30,129 divided by 8, and you should get uh, 3766.125, right? So... Uh, 3766.125, that's what your calculator will give you. But let's go ahead and see my work here. Okay, so how did I do this problem? So you take 8, right, and we're going to try to divide it into this number. So I'm going to look at this first number, and I'm like, okay, can 8 go into 3? No, 8 cannot go into 3, okay? So now we have to tack on another digit, right? Oh, now 8 can go into 30, right, divide into this. So... 8 goes into 30 how many times? Three times, right? I can fit three eights into 30, so that we're, we're going to have to take this, this next step, right? So once I determine at, um, how many times 8 can goes into 30, now by the way, too, if you're an elementary teacher or you're somebody looking to formally review uh, long division, I actually offer, um, in some of my other uh, certification courses, uh, I go through all, all of that, basic mathematical operations, multiplication, div long division. This is not uh, a replacement. Uh, this is not a substitute for a full lesson. Okay, I'm just kind of quickly reviewing this problem, right? So eight, uh, 8 can't go into 3, so we got to add on another digit here. So 8 can go into 30 three times. So what we do, right, the procedure is we go 3 times 8 is 24. And then we have to subtract, right? So 24 from 30 is 6. Okay, now we start asking ourselves the same thing again. Okay, can eight go into six? No, it cannot. Okay, I can't fit one eight into six, so I got to drop down a digit one. Okay, so that's sixty-one, and we're going to ask ourselves, hmm, uh, eight goes into sixty-one how many times? Ooh, I could fit seven eights into sixty-one, so that's going to be seven times eight. Now I got to have to, I can't fit this perfectly, so I'm going to have to uh, subtract. So it's going to be seven times eight. That is 56. This is what we're doing here is the division algorithm, this little procedure. So uh, 7 times 8 is 56. I subtract, and this is 5. Then I ask myself again, can 8 go into 5? No. So i got to drop down to 2. 8 could go into 52. How many times? 6 times. Okay, so 6 times 8, that's 48. All right, then I subtract here. I get 4. Can 8 go into 4? Nope. So then i got to drop down. That last digit, 9, so I have 49, so 8 goes into 49 how many times? 6 times, so 6 times 8, okay, is, of course, 48. When I subtract, I get 1. And can 8 go into 1? 
Nope. Is there any more digits to drop down? Nope, there isn't. So that's it. Okay, so this is my answer, right? 370, uh, uh, sorry, 37666, but I have this remainder. Okay, this is one remaining. So you probably wrote your answer this way uh, 3766 remainder one, or you could write it as 3766 one over eight. Okay, so you could write it this way as well. Now, Again, I'm kind of quickly going over, uh, you know, the, the the steps in the division algorithm. I wouldn't. This is not a lesson that hey, if I was teaching a student this the first time, we wouldn't start with a problem like this. We would start with a more basic problem, and we would uh, reinforce the concepts. But uh, all of you out there watching this video, I'm assuming, already learned how to do this uh, long division. Okay, uh, you've learned now. It may not be exactly this way. You might be using zeros, dropping down as placeholders. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so stylistically, uh, if you know uh, yours looks a little bit different than mine, don't worry about it. Okay, the bottom line is, did you get this answer? Three seven six six, remainder one, or three seven six six and one eighth. Okay, now if you take one eighth, okay, one divided by eight, that's the decimal equivalent of 0.125. Okay, so this is the same thing as 0.125. And that's why our final answer is 3766.125, because that is our one eighth. All right, so again, what's the whole point of this video? The point is when you're learning mathematics, okay, you learn a lot of algorithms, you learn a lot of procedures, a lot of concepts. And I think a lot of students, uh, especially at the more advanced, math, uh, advanced mathematics levels, like algebra and beyond, they tend to not um, appreciate, maybe that's the right word, what they learned back in elementary school. You know, those teachers that taught you in the first grade, second grade, third grade, all they were just critical to your development. Okay, that's such an important time for our education. And you might just think about it. How did you learn this? You probably don't even remember how you learned it. You just somehow you learned it. Okay, And that's where you really have to be appreciative for those teachers that um, helped you you know, understand these concepts, right? Because our minds, you know, like at seven, eight, nine years old, or even six years old, are just like sponges. We're absorbing all these concepts. So um, now if you forgot this, how to do this problem and you struggle with it, yeah, don't feel bad about it. I'm sure you can relearn this uh, in not too uh, long of a time. But the bottom line here, what I want to um, really drive home one last time, is that you just never know uh, how these um, things that we uh, learn in elementary school come to apply or come to um, are necessary to learn more advanced mathematics. Okay, so for example, the division algorithm. So if you continue on in uh, higher order algebra, you will face things like this, and you're going to have to know how to do the division algorithm. Now, I'll just give you a little sneak peek. There is a shortcut to doing division. Okay, you don't have to do this the exact way like we just did this uh, arithmetic problem. There are shortcuts, but you're going to be expected to remember the division algorithm just like this problem like we just did right now. Okay, so if some way you found this video entertaining, useful, helpful, please consider smashing that like button. I would appreciate that. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, um, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a good long time, like 10 plus years. I already have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel organized in various playlists. All those videos are there for you. Obviously, I love teaching math. I'm, I'm teaching new stuff all the time. Wide variety of topics, basic math, middle school math, and high school, and even uh, beyond more advanced mathematics. But if you're interested in my best resources, you want to check out uh, my Math Help program and those other resources. You can find those, again, in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.